I'm Dr. Laura Danley. I'm the host of tonight's program, All Kids Spice Considered. And as always, Dr. David Reitzel and uh, Patrick So and Tony Cook. And we're here to bring you the latest, greatest news from the cosmos. Why don't you all say hi to everybody who's out there in TV land? Hi, Mom! There, doesn't that make you feel welcomed? That space time, like a medium, can also carry gravitational waves that emanate out when you get a black hole or massive bodies falling into each other. The energy release causes space time to wiggle. Did you see how that kind of wiggled there? That causes these ripples through space time. Those ripples come and pass by the Earth, and we always love the scale of effect vastly exaggerated. The Earth also wiggles back and forth because space and time itself gets. So, Believe it or not, we can measure those wiggles. Those are great, greatly exaggerated because the size of those wiggles is one ten thousandth of the size of a proton, a proton. So how is it? What, what do we learn from asteroids and studying asteroids and comets that helps us understand where we came from, how the Earth formed? Well, one of the things that's uh, so wonderful about planet Earth, from my perspective, is it has a wonderful mix of land and ocean. But the consequence of all of that geological activity and the water is it tends to erase the oldest materials on Earth. So if what you're interested in is learning about the conditions that formed our solar system, you really want to look for something that hasn't been exposed to that. There is a flow rate determined absolutely back here. It, this it, was a brand new innovation. You designed it? I designed it, yeah. but, and it, it was because they came from <laughs> JPL at the right time. Thank you. How many people in the audience have a telescope? So kind of a small number. Yeah, I didn't get one. I got one on my 40th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> was my first telescope, so I was already kind of in the astronomy thing there you go. before I actually looked through a telescope. But the Hubble, yeah. Hubble was my first, right? <laughs> actually, there's some truth. Actually, uh, for me, that's there's some truth. That's actually that. some truth. Yeah. Um, I done, you know, grad school. Even yeah. Anyway, good point. <laughs> this okay, now Joe Biden's orbit is actually even more remarkable than Sedna because even at closest approach to the sun, it's 80 AU away. So once you have two data points, you draw a line through them, it's just like big deal. I okay. just have to point out the VP in the name, like MU69. <laughs> so. That's right, that's right. So again, you know, when you're up at the telescope, it's like 14,000 feet, there's no oxygen, so you get, you get real creative. So our next story is from the well-known journal of Gondwana Research. Gondwana is a massive continent from, oh, about 130 million years ago. And next to it is Laurasia, yeah. my personal favorite. Uh, and, um, and they together have moved together and come apart, but you may have heard of Pangaea. Um, Pangaea is made up of Gondwana and Laurasia. So if you didn't know that, that's because you weren't around then, but um, <laughs> that's what the Earth, in fact, used to look like. And so we can use just a small snapshot, about three seconds or even less, and be able to tell you it's going to be a two, a four, a six, or an eight earthquake very, very quickly. Oh, that's so great. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I, I, don't, I only moved here eight years ago, so this oh. like freaks me out every time the Earth moves. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. I'm just like, yay! And we project that if the funding showed up tomorrow, we would, it would be two years before public alerts would be going out. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was, I was, I was censoring myself. I really was. Uh, so, okay. <laughs> what do we do? How can we help? I, I didn't realize this was going to turn into write your comments. Yeah, no. Your, what, what's going to have to happen? Are, are a bunch of people going to have to die first, or what? <laughs> I, I, I mean, quite honestly, that sometimes that is how. We have gotten money in the past for station build up. The entire. <laughs> this sounds awful. It was cat naps. It was um, three, three and a half hours of sleep each night. 
So he looked a little tired there, don't you think? His eyelids were drooping. Who is that, Laura? <laughs> oh, who is that? <laughs> that is the principal of Esther Al Alliga Alligator's turn. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. Don't tell him. Uh, yes, the principal investigator, Alan Stern. I like Alligator Stern. I'm not a religious person, but I, every time I look at that deep field image, I feel like I just have to fall to my knees. It's, it's impossibly large. And so I, I even, I just wrote down a line of poetry that I knew reached out and touched the face of God, which is just a feeling that I wanted the audience and the musicians to have at that moment. So I basically built this whole thing, just a few musical motives, and then I knew that this would be the architecture for the whole piece, that, that now I have the, the framework. And then, do you want me to keep going? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, so, so then. <laughs> oh no, yeah. no one's interested. <laughs> We're here with Bob Picardo, who played the holographic doctor on Star Trek's uh, Voyager, and we're so happy that you're here, Bob. Thanks for coming to Griffith Observatory. What brings you here today? Well, I'm showing a friend the observatory because it is not only a very famous uh, location and place that you can come to in Southern California, it's completely free for visitors, which means the price is right. And while I have you here, do you want to sing a, a phrase or two? And if you don't, we'll edit it out. Let's see. In, I guess in honor of the, uh, of the Griffith Observatory. Now all the monkeys aren't in the zoo. Every day you'll meet quite a few. So you can see it's all up to you. You could be better than you are. You could be swinging on a star by visiting the Griffith Observatory. <laughs> but there have been a lot of really remarkable new developments and trends in farming that have been experimented with and supported by the USDA that they're trying to get the word out. And so I supported that effort. So I had the opportunity to learn a lot about soils, which is really cool. So the whole idea is let's get a really healthy microbial system, never till it, that disrupts it, feed them like crazy with all these cover crops, um, and then at the end of the, of the season, you just flatten everything. So you get a, 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 like a layer, a, like a six inch layer of everything just rolled over. Changes that we have seen in Earth's history have been spread out over hundreds of thousands of years, millions of years. That's the rate at which the globe changes and the life on that globe, on Earth, adapts to that rate of change. There's no time to adapt. This is happening so quickly. And yes, there have been high global temperatures, but what hasn't happened before is this crazy, crazy rate of change. It's happening in blink of an eye in geological timescales. As I said earlier, scientists are very conservative, just they'll always say just the barest minimum. So when you get scientists saying, no, this is related, that is something to take note of. So when you look at the cost of fighting, for example, these fires, not even to mention in terms of human life and rebuilding and, and so forth, it, it would be unwise to turn our backs on it. I urge you to look at different candidates' positions on some of these things and think about the change that you want to see. You may not realize that there are things you can do, tangible things, reachable things. This is solvable. <laughs> Laura, are you, are you there? Laura. <laughs> hey, hola! Estoy aquí en Santiago de Cuba. And for those of you who don't speak Spanish, that means I'm here in Santiago de Cuba. Uh, yes, Cuba, or Cuba, I guess, <laughs> for the uh, Festival of Fire, the uh, Fiesta del Fuego, and, uh, and for a few rum drinks along the way. <laughs> so, uh, Laura, are you still there? <laughs> That's it for Laura for us.
Sure is great to be here in Chile with my friend, Al Paca. We're here to see the great total solar eclipse that's going to happen on July 2nd. What's a total eclipse? Well, Al, I'm more than happy to tell you. Do you need any special equipment to see it? Yes, you need to have eclipse glasses. You don't have to have a telescope or binoculars, but you need eclipse glasses. I can't wait to see the next total solar eclipse. You mean the next one after that's in Chile? You bet. I want to be there too. <laughs> I sound like this because my face got ripped off. <laughs> I don't know, I'm making it up. Is that enough um, B-roll of I'm good with it, yeah. over the shoulder?